Another major Canadian bank is saying that we might be getting close to the end of this downward trend in the Canadian real estate market. While maybe for the first time in a very long time, a real estate brokerage in Canada is projecting year over year declines in 2023. I'm sure you probably don't know who that is, but we'll be talking about it. It's December 2nd. My name is Matthew Fiverr. That's my trusted assistant, Matilda. This is Bald Prairie Real Estate and the weekly real estate news recap. But let's do what we always do. Start off with a terrible joke and then get into the news. Why do cows wear bells? Because their horns don't work. Do you have a terrible joke that I can use in the future? Put in the comments below. Let's get into the news. Last week, I talked about RBC saying we were getting close to the bottom based on what they're seeing. Now it's TD Bank saying they're also thinking that we're getting closer and closer to the bottom. And they expect right now with economic fundamentals where they are, that sales activity should actually be higher, which is part of why they're saying that they think market sentiment is driving this downward trend more than the actual economic fundamentals. Kind of an interesting perspective on that. As always, I'll put a link to this article below so you guys can check that out. I do want to read a couple of quotes here. Here's the first one. Once Canada's housing market adjusts to this historic hike cycle, housing supply will face tremendous pressure to keep up with the federal government's new immigration targets. If achieved, each year would mark a record high for immigration and means that demand for rental units will stay strong. Eventually, these cohorts will transition to demanding ownership and housing. And this echoes what I've been saying for a while now. New Canadians that come to Canada are not going to buy immediately. They're going to put pressure on the rental market and then they're going to look to buy, whether that's two years, three years, five years in the future. And we simply do not have the supply or the plans to increase supply to keep up with that demand. So if we continue to hit these immigration targets the federal government wants to hit, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the housing market in the future. This is a great article from Canadian Mortgage Trends talking about the bond market, which of course impacts fixed rates. If you don't know, fixed rates are impacted by the bond market. So when that goes up, fixed rate mortgages will go up. When that goes down, obviously the opposite happens. Whereas the Bank of Canada rate is what impacts variable rate mortgages. Now we've seen the bond market go down by about 60 basis points over the last couple of months from what they were all time highs. And that of course has pushed fixed rate mortgages down. We're just a little bit above 5% of the time we're recording this video. They're anticipating that if we continue to see even just a plateau in the bond market doesn't change much, that's gonna put downward pressure on the price of fixed rate mortgages to the point where by the end of quarter one, 2023, they're expecting that we're gonna see high 4% mortgages versus these low 5% rate mortgages and that they expect this trend of declining fixed rate mortgages to continue, barring some unforeseen events, and that likely though, the pace of price declines or interest rate declines is going to be quite a bit slower than the increases we saw this year. That shouldn't surprise anybody that interest rates will come down at some point, but probably a whole heck of a lot slower than they have gone up. This next report is from CMHC, hot off the press, their fall 2022 economic outlook. They're looking at delinquency rates. I talked about this last week. CMHC's most recent data shows delinquency rates, that's people that are 90 days or more behind on their payments, are at all time lows. That was pretty staggering to see this continuing to trend down. Like I've said, I think this is going to start turning back up at some point, but right now we're just not seeing that happen. The other interesting piece of information I pulled as article is looking at delinquency rates for other types of credit. So that is lines of credit, auto loans, credit cards, etc. The reason why it's important to look at that is because that's what people will slow down or stop paying as they get into financial trouble far sooner than they will stop paying their mortgage. So those are leading indicators of people in financial stress. And in this report, they compared homeowners with mortgages to those without mortgages. And in the case of this report, they're talking about those that are renting, not homeowners without mortgages. And it shouldn't be surprising to see that those that are renting have higher delinquency rates than those that are homeowners. When I put my poll up a couple of days ago, most people responded, about 60% of you guys said that they expected those that are renting would have the higher delinquency rates, and that's what we found. What is interesting here, I'm gonna put up the chart, is how much higher the delinquency rates were between homeowners and those that are renting, between two and five times higher. That was pretty interesting. And really what this shows is the financial strength of those that are homeowners, even if they have a mortgage, and all the associated costs with homeownership versus those that are renting. It's really interesting to see how much higher those delinquency rates truly are. And of course, there's a ton of really good additional information and support, so I'll link that in the description below. Another article here from Canadian Mortgage Trends. This is with Scotiabank talking about their mortgage portfolio, a couple of really interesting things. 
The first one is they're echoing much what RBC was saying, and I was talking about a couple of weeks ago, and that within Scotiabank's portfolio, they're not seeing significant pressure on those what variable rate mortgages in terms of people getting behind payments, calling, asking for change in the mortgage, et cetera. This is good news. We're seeing a lot of financial resiliency among those with variable rate mortgages. And then two really interesting tidbits I took out of there. First is among CMHC's portfolio, sorry, CMHC, Scotiabank's portfolio, uh, they're seeing delinquency rates half of what they were pre-pandemic and pre-pandemic was already record low. So talked about earlier delinquency rates among mortgage holders is really, really low right now. Again, that'll probably trend up at some point. The second one is when Scotiabank is seeing renewals coming up. Of course, I've had a lot of people say, well, when people have to renew into these higher mortgage rates, it's going to cause them to have significant financial stress and have to sell their house. Well, in, Scot in Scotiabank's portfolio, they're not going to see the bulk of renewals till 2026. There's a lot of things like that between now and then with interest rates and the market and everything else. But that's when the bulk of Scotiabank's renewals come up is 2026. And now we get to this week's headline article, and that is Remax coming out saying that the Canadian real estate market on average is going to see house prices decline 3.3%. Now, this is the first time this year that we've seen a real estate brokerage come out and say prices are going to decline next year. And probably the first time in quite a while we've seen a real estate brokerage projecting declines year over year. And of course, they're talking about average price. You know me, I don't like talking about average price. I think that is far more likely to get skewed by composition of sales and shows a lot more vol volatility in terms of prices going up and down. But that's what they're using here in this article. I like when I do my Canadian housing market updates to talk about benchmark price. It's far more accurate, I think. But let's quickly talk about how Canada, well, we don't really have a national housing market. There's no such thing. What is happening in Calgary or Halifax is very different than what's happening in Toronto or Vancouver. If you check out my monthly Canadian housing market updates where I talk about all these different markets, you can see how different things are reacting based on different factors. I'll put a link in the description below to my most recent housing market update. You should check that one out. In Remax's numbers here, for example, they're expecting that prices across the prairies to remain stable or increase. Calgary, for example, has a 7% increase. Whereas Toronto, they're expecting a 12% decrease and a 5% decrease in Vancouver. So again, what happens in one city is not happening in the other, or doesn't mean that it's going to happen in one city versus another. We're living in a country that has very, very hyper-regionalized real estate market. And of course, I'll put the full report in the description below so you can read about your market, for example, and see how it's going to impact you, or at least what Remax is expecting is gonna happen in your market. Hey, uh, what's this? Well, this right here is a video I just did on how you can get a great deal buying a house, even if it's a bad market. Lots of great tips there. Steal a few of those. I think you're really gonna enjoy that. As always, guys, if you like this video, give me a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that for me if you wanna keep updated on the Canadian real estate market. Leave some comments below. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section. And as always, thanks very much for watching.